The reason why I also think men under 30 should not be in a serious relationship is because if they are, odds are you are going to grow apart from your partner. Because as a man under 30, you probably don't know who you are. And even if you do, there's so much more room to grow. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Who Can Relate? And uh, I'm in the same, if you guys are watching on YouTube, I'm in the same studio. This loft is just massive. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this wood wall real quick. I'm going to get these fiddle leaf figs, as you see right now behind me. And uh, I'm going to switch up the aesthetic. I'm all about the aesthetic. So today we're going to be talking about why men under 30 should not be dating with the intention of marriage. And I think a lot of women especially were um, curious and had a lot more questions from the last episode last week with Rome as we touched on this topic. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Well, let me bring another fellow king on so we can, we can explain some stuff and hopefully bring some more clarity to the table. So allow me to introduce my guest, Mr. Ajiman Clay. Thank you for having me, brother. I am... Uh, first of all, bro, it's, it's an honor to have you here. You, it's an you honor hit me, to be here. You hit me like Thursday. I think you're like, yo, I'm in town. What's good with an episode? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, sure, sure. <laughs> I had no idea what we were going to talk about, but I was like, I'll figure it out. So, sure. um, it's an honor to have you here, bro. Thank you. Cause I'm just taking you up on your offer. I remember we had a call like a few months ago and you're like, yeah. yo man, if you're ever in town, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, okay. Oh yeah. I'm here. Let's go. Let's, <laughs> Let's get this. it. Let's and if, this. if, uh, if people are like, wait, I recognize that guy. We did a IG live, um, I think back in June. Yeah, May, June. Damn, that was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, late, probably June, yeah. Yeah, and we rapped about um, uh, racism. We, we talked about being black in America. We, we talked about a lot of stuff, obviously, that was you know heavy in the, the George Floyd time. So, um, but yeah, so today, and, and that's the thing, is like, I'm excited for people to um, get to know the intellect that you have and the knowledge that you have. Sure. Bro, because when we met, we met, uh, is almost a year to the day almost we met we met on my birthday last year wow at at the at the job um, that was only a year ago bro it was a year ago <clears throat> that's crazy yeah oh my god and it was it was on my birthday and uh yeah in miami yeah and i had uh i had seen you before in photos i think i think vice versa and um you know it's, it's funny because i think a lot of guys that i meet in person um because usually I've been doing this longer than most people I work with right? Sure. At, at this point. And so sure. um, I think a lot of people are surprised when I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm, I'm Justin. I'm JD. You're nice to right. meet you. And, and can I help you out with anything? And right, people right. are like, right. what's the catch, bro? Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah, been yeah. looking at you for the last 10 years trying uh-huh. to get to your level. And I'm, I'm like, just, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. <laughs> you know, yeah, so you're on my Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I appreciate sure, it. Last one. Yeah. So, um, you know, so when we were talking, um, I noticed that like me, you have way more to bring to the table than aside from what God blessed you with, Appreciate you that. know, physically. So I was like, and we started talking about books. We were talking about, um, you hit me with that, uh, mentorship app. Um, I can't, I can't think of the name right yeah, now. Optimize. Shout out to Brian Johnson, my, yeah. my mentor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and hit me with that. And I was like, yo, like, this cat is, is, is an evolved man, you know, like you in, put me on Jay Shetty and, oh, and, and, um, yeah. you know, your podcast and, yeah. and no, I, I, I want to say, yeah. um, it was so refreshing to, you know, again, finally meet you in person yeah. and, you know, you lived up to and exceeded the expectations. Oh, wow. Um, Appreciate that. And also it was like my mind playing tricks on me because a lot of the times you'll meet someone and they don't live up to the expectations. And yeah. then it's like, Oh, screw him. He's this, he's that forever. <laughs> yeah. Cause it was like the love that turns into hate or right. something like that. Right, 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 right. Cause like, I was always, you know, who is this guy? Why, yeah. do, why do they love him so much? Yeah. Da, da, da. And then I meet you. I'm like, Oh, he's great. Oh, <laughs> I'm evangelical. So, you know, so I, it, I, I, I definitely took that experience and I hope that whenever I meet somebody in person yeah. or, you know, if they've had that same type of uh, reverence for me right. and I disappointed them, I'm sorry because I really, <laughs> you know, well, you I want to uh, keep that love and that energy going. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you, you didn't disappoint me. And like I said, I remember. Uh, yeah, like we hit it off. Yeah. We're like, what's up, bro? Where you at? Where you from? Oh, yeah. what you reading? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, oh, good swag. Right. Okay, where's that? Right, yeah, right, right. right. Like, we're like, oh, where you been? Bob, yeah. Like, we were like, bang, like right. five off, minutes off the in, jump. bro. Yeah, like, off they're the like, jump. oh, you're on set. Like, we were like, yeah. boom. Yeah, which is rare, bro. Yeah, sure, for sure. 
sure, for sure. So I was excited sure. to um to do the live, you know, back when and then uh Yeah, cuz I was involved, I was nervous. That was nervous. That was tough tough talks, you know, and yeah, and I got to yeah. commend you because it's one thing to have tough talks, but it's also a, a tough thing to to have tough talks on camera. Yeah. Tough talks for you know, the world to see. Sure, and sure. I, I have to commend you for doing that. Mm -hmm. And even in this, we're like, okay, should we talk about this? Okay, are we gonna talk about this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm I'm like Googling and stuff like that. But yeah. now I'm just like, all right, I'm ready. I'm yeah. comfortable. We're in a safe place. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're gonna say what we're gonna say. We'll talk about what we're gonna talk about. And Who can relate? Who can relate? I've been on the low. I've been taking <laughs> my time. <laughs> and, and the other thing too is like, a, a lot of people, um, they always say that they see my outline on my lap and I don't have an outline today. I'm oh, just gonna- okay gonna roll off roll off, off, right off the dome exactly so um anyways but before we really get rolling um a little bit more background oh, yeah. on you um father model actor entrepreneur we're gonna talk about all the businesses and um anything else that you want to add yeah appreciate it man what's up everybody <laughs> if uh, it's the first time meeting me oh, my name is ajaman clay i am a um a model um an actor an entrepreneur as he said, father, father of twins. We, we just um, celebrated their second birthday. Yeah, yeah. Aquarius twins. Fellow Aquarius. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'm just um, navigating and balancing uh, my deepest life purpose, going after mm. what I want, you know, more than anything. Also, staying healthy, uh, being a good person, being a good father, learning, trial and tribulation, family, yeah. a lot of things. So. Uh, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And and that's why you were the perfect guest because originally we were going to talk about interracial dating mm. and as bars. Yeah. Which is a whole, you know, whole nother thing. But I, I felt to really do that justice, I probably would be better off having a couple on with, with yeah. Shay. But anyways, <clears throat> so then I started thinking like, okay, well my boy's over 30 and I know he's on the same page with me, but, but I, this whole purpose of this episode is to break it down into um, things that, that happen that we have experience in, yeah. um, that happened to us personally, and um, hopefully bring some clarity. Women have a hard time understanding why it takes us so long. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, if, if you want to, yeah, roll Why does today. it take us so long? Because <laughs> yeah, um, on April 25th, I'll actually be 38. I'll be on my 38th wow. birthday. And many times, um, so my girls, when they were born, I was 35, going right. on 36. I think yeah. So I was like, I couldn't imagine doing this in my twenties. It would have just been impossible. And I was twenty when, yeah, I, when it, I had my daughter. It's impossible, <laughs> like bro. Damn near. Like it's <laughs> it's impossible. Right, um, right. I, I just couldn't. So many instances, I was like, bro. If I was twenty, I would have snapped. Yeah, I'd have sure. lost it. Um, for sure. And w how old were you when you got married? I was thirty. Uh, two, thirty-two. Yeah, because yeah. you also had a lot of. Right, like almost triumphs, like really good yeah. relationships, yeah. and then they just didn't quite make right. it. And you know, this one makes it and it's gonna make it into eternity. But yeah, but you're probably like case in point on what we're talking about is like, yeah, you know, why dating men dating under thirty might not just quite be ready for mm -hmm. marriage. I think for me with Shay, it was two things. One, it was the right woman. And then the other thing is, it was the right time. Mm. But the time Sorry. thing, I'm going to stay with that. Um, and, and this is why for me, I am I am very set. I got to die on this hill of men under 30. I just, I think it's damn near impossible to be married or to fully commit yourself to a woman. Right. The reason why it was the right time for me with my wife is because more so mentally than anything, right. I was at the right frame of mind. For sure. Um, one, I could see the value in my wife. Mm. like truly I felt mm. it I sensed it you know how it is dog like when you when you meet a meet a woman and you're like oh I can't really get away with some of the antics that I've been used to and accustomed <laughs> to getting slid you know slid right, by with, right. and oh dang that don't work you know what I'm saying and yeah. then when they call you out and, and they challenge you in a healthy way and and that was the, the first thing I realized and the other thing was just like am I ready personally to let go of my selfishness that's a huge thing for men. It's ego, selfishness. It's all about me. Like that takes years to really a become aware of it and how powerful it is, and then b to actually accept that you need to make some changes. It. I mean, I'm still trying to make some changes. So when I was 32, marrying my wife, I was even at the cusp. I was still at the beginning yes, yeah. 
er, beginner level of the evolved man, if, if you will. I just had a conversation with a friend of mine today. He recently got married and I attended um, the wedding of another friend yeah. from college who recently got married. We're in similar ages. And he was like, oh, it changed. Like, right. she changed that quick. I right. changed that quick. It fundamentally was yeah. different. And I'm glad that I'm at this place. I'm at this age where, right. you know, I'm I'm ready to accept it. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, you just don't have it. We were talking mm. about like that click, that, that 30 year exactly. old click. Yeah. You know, things just click more, more so than anything, the, the, you know, the ego in this, in the space mm-hmm. of the ego, the emotions, right. The emotions, the, right. you know, looking back on the, the, the emotional immaturity, mm. I can, I can, pinpoint case in point right the exact moment and moments where i was just emotionally immature emotionally incapable at that moment to love fully to uh put my ego to the side to um be more compassionate and right. consoling in in relationships to also realize what's at stake yeah when you're making certain decisions yeah um in in the world so and and how old yeah. were you when when what when you had that you said you can pinpoint it the emotional insecure uh, emotional uh, oh i mean definitely through my 20s yeah. super immature yeah i mean even well into my 30s super <laughs> right. immature <laughs> Um, yeah. but sometimes it takes like life changing things, which yeah. we can get into. I've had some sure. real life, like life changing things. It's right. one, it's one thing to be like, Oh, you know, my life changed. Like, no, yeah. like some real stuff, you know, you have children, your <laughs> right. life changes immediately. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, close loved ones pass yeah. away yeah. or get sick and ill that right. changes your life. Obviously, sure. you know, pandemic, um, you know, injury yeah. changes your life. Um, so it, it changes how you see everything. Right. Like I've even been looking at houses in Georgia and <laughs> buying a whole plot of land yeah. and just building on it um, because my perspective has changed. Yeah. And, you know, excuse me. People are like, oh, no, I don't I don't see you doing that. Oh, you won't do that. Like, no, you don't understand. It was kind of I know we were just talking about recently the way of the superior man. Yeah. And also my man E.T., E.T., the hip hop preacher. I remember listening yeah. to him. He always said, like, just just be willing to change your life like like that, like in a yeah. second, like yeah. like be willing to just give it all up and right. shift. Yeah. And 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 these type of experiences, um, you know, lend to that. Mm. And so I won't say that someone under 30 a man you know can't do it but right. it's like it's you're playing the percentages and, exactly. and and it's gonna be a much lower percentage percentage because yeah. the the thing is you as a person have to be whole have to know who yourself are right, right, right. and we talked about that earlier about mm. how we take for granted mm. how much work we did uh, how many books you've read, yeah. how much meditation and prayer you've done, yeah. how how much you've stuck to your routine, right. how many conferences and conversations you've attended, places you've traveled. Yeah. And that, that just, you know, comes with time. Mm-hmm. And then you say, oh, I'm ready for this next phase. Right. I'm, I'm secure in who I am. I know what I want. I yeah. know how I want it. And I know what I'm going to do to go get it. Yeah. Now it's time to go get my woman and start yeah. my family and so on and so forth. Yeah, and, and I have a, a thing I've, I've said on here um, before that I think men only change for two reasons. Mm. One, one of two reasons, rather. Give me this bar. Money mm. or, in my opinion, is, is the answer, women. Certain women bring out different types of you in the relationship. Right. Some women push your buttons and then you have all these triggers resurface and all these bad patterns that resurface in the, in the not so pretty side of you resurfaces. Or you have the fellow evolved woman who's bringing out the best in you, who's giving you healthy challenges. Um, it's a beautiful mess, as Rome said last week. And that takes time for a man to understand that. So when you're 23, 25, 28 yeah i know it's close to 30 but i'm I, we keep talking about this click because it is just yeah, that 30 I, is a click i don't I, we tried to ex- understand it earlier offline and and i i can't i don't know what that click means i don't know what it, what it represents but it happens and and you're the second guy now to tell me 
they had it too. So I'm sure there's a lot of more out here. And so when you're in that, in those twenties, I, I just, I didn't have that mental capacity to, again, understand the value of a woman. Mm. I didn't understand that I was emotionally insecure. Right. My ego took place of everything. Right. I would not sit down and tell the girl I was with at 26, you know what? You actually hurt my feelings. Right. I would, I would never come out of my mouth. I was like, what's the problem? We got a problem. You know what I mean? Right. Like, cause your ego takes over. I'm, I'm not sorry. You're just tripping. And it was like, whoa, whoa. Like bro, it takes two. Number one. So that emotional intelligence and also the, the, um, overcoming the emotional insecurity that happens later for us because it takes that much time for us to manage the ego for us, for us to, um, honestly, bro, be present. Can we just talk about that? Like when you're in twenties, I just felt like it was hard for me to stay present because I was looking ahead so much. I was, I was yeah. always doing this instead of yeah. just looking right here, right there, right in front of you. you know, and, and that stuff takes time because it takes maturity. Um, why men, I personally believe um, take longer to mature than women. I don't know the answer to you should that. Like give the thirty year olds like a checklist. You know, like if you're under thirty, checklist. <laughs> right. Like, um, do you know your girl's love languages? Like, right. you better believe the Bro. girl knows it. Yeah, she knows verbatim. And the under dudes under thirty. Oh well. Uh, 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 well. Yeah. 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 Exactly. See, that's one example. Brother. My point. Yeah. Go, yeah. go read love languages. Yeah. You and, know? and I think you know a, a lot of times too. In my twenties, it was like it's not me. It's her. It's not me. It's oh, her. For sure. I'd point the finger again. For sure. Ego, and lack of accountability. All of these things clicked once I turned 30. But it's complex. Bro, it's complex, yeah. complex emotions. A hundred percent. Complex. Yeah. And if you're not in the right mental capacity, back to that, as complex as it is, it's overwhelming for a lot of cats. You know what I mean? Like a, a lot of guys even- And when, still is and will uh, always be. Bro, yeah, I was going to say 30 is like the, the how do I want to phrase it? 30 is like the, here's the ticket to the amusement park. And you can ride all these rides, you can eat all this different food, and there's lines for certain rides, and that's how it is for men. It's like you just get your entry level to the Evolved Man theme park. Which yeah. ride are you going to take? Which route are you going to take? You got the Fast Pass Pass, or you got the, I'm too cheap to put in the money, right. I'm too lazy to read books. Mm. It's all the same thing. Mm. So 30 is the base, in my opinion. Yeah. 32, 33, I'm, I yeah. just turned 34, and I, I had a, a revelation last night with, with one of my boys, because I messed up. We are constantly evolving, constantly learning, but 30 is the ve- the bare minimum of when we're like, oh. I think, yeah, The so here's uh, Let's get checklist it. number two. Let's get it. The ability to apologize. <laughs> like, not on some, you know, I got caught up on some <laughs> yeah. dumb shit. Like, retroactively. <laughs> right. Man, you know what I was thinking about my actions? <laughs> right. In regards to this subject yeah. over the course of the last few months, and I was wrong. Mm. That accountability. And I'm sorry for that. And yeah. I'm, I apologize if I made you feel that way. Right. And, you know, can we can we move forward from yeah. that? Yeah. Um, that would never happen no. in my 20s ever. Mm-hmm. And that, that accountability um, factor is everything for a woman. And it's also everything for a man. And I think um, a lot of times when I used to not apologize or whatever, I would just push it under the rug. And then I would, t- I, or I would be like, man, the grass is greener over here. Let me, let me go, yeah, yeah. let me go slide over here to right. this grass. Right. <laughs> right. And then you realize like, oh wait, I'm uh, actually, what I'm doing is I'm running from my problems. Right. I'm taking the same me into a new relationship. And here's the messed up part, expecting new results. Right. <laughs> yeah. What the hell kind yeah. of equation is that? Dang. All of, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, all that is 30 and up. So for the women out there, I know this is hard to hear. What's the bar I had earlier today? Oh, the growth and love. No, I said it, it's it's um, People's, harsh or something. Oh, the truth. Um, the truth hurts, but it's still the truth. Yeah, the, so yeah, the yeah. truth hurts, and and don't forget the other bar. Yeah, that's uh, what I was trying to remember. What's the love and growth? It's like the relationships. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Love does not. And this is Rome. This, this is not me. This is Rome. Uh, Rome said last week. Rome, I'm still in your bar. Yeah, he said. Uh, Trademarking it, it. It's not love that keeps a relationship. It's growth. I don't know what 20 year old something man has that bar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you Wait. said that, I had to sit down and Bro. like write that. And down. You're about to be 38. Yeah, I thought about that for like five minutes. Bro. I was like, I like, yeah. Pff. 
And and yeah. so for the women out there, if if you guys are dating a man who's under thirty, and and you guys are are you know dating with the intention of marriage, we are not sitting here. N- neither was Rome and I last week saying it's impossible. We are not saying that. No, no, no. We are just saying, first of all, we're speaking from personal experiences. And, and secondly, we're saying the odds <laughs> are not in his favor. Right. And that's, again, that's the, the harsh reality of it. But I wouldn't supposed to lie to you. You know what I'm saying? So that is it. Um, it takes experience. It takes growth. And, it, and it's on repeat of both of those things. It's a, it's a cycle. I think. Um, so it's good. Like, by the way, like I was, I was speaking with someone today just about um, therapy yeah Ooh, and, let's talk about that yeah and yeah. how um they they got ahead of the curve of therapy it wasn't like they saw a therapist because something tragic happened mm. they were just ahead of it you know mm-hmm. for for the 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 growth aspect of it and, and probably the maintenance yeah exactly yeah. and mm-hmm. you know i thought about it because um so um i had seen a therapist um last year like or a year and a half ago was that the first time it wasn't the first time but it was like the most consistent okay it was definitely the most consistent and we how, hit it off we how, had a really good how old were you if you know my asking? probably 35 36 but for the 36. first time you went to therapy y- yeah i would say in 20s or 30s in my 30s okay there's the third one i just asked there you go <laughs> in my 30s in my 30s carry on yep <laughs> that's three <laughs> That's three, three, four, giving you, you <laughs> right. Know, you under thirties, giving them those bars. But yeah, so I went to see a therapist, and I was I was having some challenges navigating uh, the balance in my life and and the stress, the perceived stress, and it helped out so much. And our time kind of, you know, it kind of it was like a set time, and it was like you know, okay, we're ready for for now. But then I was thinking about recently. I was like, man, I should probably like you know, reset, circle try back. to find one. Um, but this feels therapeutic though. It feels really good to speak, mm. speak out. Um, you know, it's like writing in your journals, yeah. one thing. Wow. But, but this, this feels different to, to speak out on it wow. and, 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 and let it out. You know, That's like powerful, sometimes bro. I remember when I'd be like in New York and just walking down the streets and I'll just yell, just yell out a big old scream. And I felt so good. Yeah. To release it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so holding it, holding it out. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's just well. That's that's powerful, bro. Uh, Let's stick with that for a second because that's a couple. That's a testament to a couple of things. One is it's important that we address what is probably common sense to a lot of people. But for the few that really have a hard time really accepting this, you can't suppress how you feel. Um, It's important to assess those feelings. Again, I think for men. We don't really know how to actually assess and figure out feelings, right? The easiest emotion when the shit hits the fan, for lack of a better term, the easiest emotion for us normally, typically, is to um, show anger. Anger, rage, revenge, Yelling envy. and puff out my chest yeah. and try to mark my territory. It's like old adage stuff, right? It's, a lot hasn't changed in that regard. Instead of, again, as I said, you know, now being um, trying to work on becoming the evolved man, I can sit down and say, even even to a grown man or let alone my wife, like, you know, bro, that uh, that kind of hurt me a little bit. I want to talk about it with you. So that way, hopefully, you know, we can resolve this. I wasn't doing that at 20. Not at all. You know, and so I, I think it's important that we we hold that space of you're saying it feels good to let it out. I think a lot of people are scared because it's, it's a fear of judgment, right? There's probably at least five, 10, you know, major life relationships that I've had with people, um, you know, friends, loved ones that if I had to just did that, I mean, right. there's a good chance we could still be friends. Today. Exactly. You know, it actually has me thinking, uh, there's probably a couple of people I'm going to reach out to and be like, you know what? Um, you know, you hurt me. I feel hurt. Right. I, I feel, I feel not only hurt, wounded. Mm. I feel it's like wounded. Yeah, it's a scar. Know? I saw I saw a play last year in Hollywood right before the, um, right before the pandemic. Maybe it was January, February, mm-hmm. but it was about your wounds. It was like based off like this Greek tragedy. Right, right. But they incorporated the the theme was wounds. Mm-hmm. Like that was like the recurring theme, mm-hmm. and I'll never forget it. And 
we are sometimes not authentic with what wounded us. Mm. Yeah. And that's, again, that's powerful because that's you showing vulnerability. Mm. A lot of men, we struggle with that, um, unfortunately. But to get yeah, to tough. the level, like how old were you when you kind of had that realization? Um, in my 30s. Okay. Yeah. So it was, again. Um, it was, yeah, so this, <laughs> it was um, thanks to also, it's like in my 30s, in yeah. addition to my 30s, also kind of like a form of therapy. So when right. I actually, when I think about therapy as well, yeah. um, acting became my therapy. And okay. um, I, How so? so my, my acting coach who taught me everything I know about the craft and mm. acting and uh, rest in peace, she, she passed away yeah. uh, May 11th, yeah. 2020. Uh, just um, just after midnight on Mother's Day. And she was like my mm. fairy godmother. And she yeah. was a sage. And she, mm. you know, in addition to like the acting, we would have private right, private right. sessions with acting. Sure. But it was like therapy. Life and, lessons. Yeah, yeah, life lessons. Mm. Because I'm trying to connect with these characters. I'm trying to connect with the crux right. of what is really driving them. Right, right. And, you know, she would make me write letters to my five-year-old, seven-year-old self. Wow. Um, like, like a love letter? like a No, no, like, a, and- yeah, like just like... Like if you could, you know, um, speak to you. Yeah. If you could speak to that, that boy, what would you say to him? It's powerful. Yeah. And because that little boy, you know, still lives in you kind of thing. And, um, you know, um, we would do all types of, of, of exercises Mm -hmm. to release the walls Mm -hmm. that I was holding up or still am holding up to, right. We're talking about vulnerability. Um, we're talking about, you know, therapeutic Mm -hmm. um actions and situations and um so i would say that's what sparked Mm. the 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 ability to to go down this path and Mm. stay down this path and and realize you know a new a new uh vision for life so let me ask you if this was you at 28 Mm -hmm. 25 24 do you think you would have that type of space for as powerful as that is, and would you have treated it the same way? It's possible. Okay. Um, it's it's possible, but you know, when when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Come on now. Yeah, and it, it, it's possible because yeah. you do see some some people get it, but again, it's a it's a much lesser lesser impact. like likelihood. Yeah, yeah, um, and I think it's probably a lesser impact on you. Yeah, because it's like <clears throat> you're spe- speaking of therapy. I've been in therapies since I was 17, like, you know, adult ish. I was in therapy as a kid too, but, um, but 17 and then here we are. So 17 years later, you know how, like you said, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, but it's also, you know how sometimes like you hear a message differently. Oh yeah. It resonates with you. Oh yeah. In a different way. Oh yeah. And I've had that so many times lately Mm -hmm. that I've, I've had this new mindset of growth. And my therapist was like, you know, I was telling you this when you were like 20, 20 some years old, right? right? I'm like, word? Yeah. For real? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. 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 And I'm actually telling you the same way I told you exact right now. Same. In fact, I can tell you where you were, where I was. When we, and I was like, oh, because in my 20s, for whatever reason, right. I just didn't think I needed it to stick. I was just like, ah, oh, figure it out. Or it's not me, it's her. Or, or it's like reading a book in your 20s and then reading it in your 30s. Bro. That's crazy. Come I read, on. I read um, one of my favorite books uh, is The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. It's, okay. it's the story of this, this poor Chinese farmer mm. who rises to be the top like landowner in the entire province yeah. um, from rags to riches. And reading it in, in my 20s, it had it was a great book but reading it in my 30s was like yeah yeah whoa right wow right oh my god 
I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Oh my God, amazing. So exactly. so yeah, man, yeah. getting the lessons in your twenties. Yeah. That's why it's like it's it's so good, man, to 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 get recurring lessons. Right. You know, to freshen up. Literally yeah. take the same course, sure. read the same book mm -hmm. at a later time, a later date. Yeah. Visit the same place. How is traveling in your twenties right. versus in your thirties? Exactly. Bro, even even a lot of people, um, the people watching and listening, this is for you. A lot of people hit me like I watched that episode or listened to that episode two, three, four times. Wow. And every time I rewatched or re-listened to it, I had different notes. Wow. Because you receive it differently at, wow. at a different time. If you have a wow. bad day and you're trying to dissect something and consume something, it might not stick as well as if you're if you have that open mindedness in that moment. Um, here, here's another hack for for anyone when it comes to reading. When you pick up and this is only applicable for self self improvement books, okay? Not nonfiction or fiction. When you pick up a self-improvement book, you pick it up for a reason. You're going through something. Okay. If it's relationship hack 101, you probably got some problems in your relationship. Okay. Right. Well, go to the content page, a contents page, sorry, and look at each chapter. And if you're going through he cheated on me, I'm sure there's a chapter saying he cheated on me. Start the book there. Mm. You don't have to read those books cover to cover all okay. the time. Okay. And here's why. Watch how well you consume that chapter in mm. that moment because you're craving it so much. It's like when you have a taste for something, you actually go eat it. You're like, oh man, I hit the spot. Right, right, right. They hit the spot up here, up top. When you comes to reading that specific chapter, that specific time. Um, so it's, it's like you said, it's timing. Well, sorry, like I said, and, and to your point too, it's timing is everything, you know, for, for men, especially for women too, right? But for men, especially because Let's, let's go back to um, the you hurt me conversation for men to have that ability to be able to discuss that. The reason why it takes so long for us to have that um, hindsight and to have that that knowledge in 20 in when you're in your 20s, for me, everyone was replaceable. I don't know if you can relate to that, but for oh, yeah. me, I was just like, man, whatever, it's, I'll go and get another one. Whether it was a friend, a girl, a oh, car, yeah. Oh, yeah. whatever it was, oh, yeah. everything and everyone was replaceable. Right. Now I'm like, shit, damn, mid-30s, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> Take a moment, dog. <laughs> ah, you're only as old as you look. You're or, or, old as you feel. You're only old as Age you feel. Age ain't nothing but I gotta, a number. I got to remind myself. Age ain't nothing but a number. Here I am in, in my mid-30s, and my values are different. Way different. My value of time is completely different. Oh, you know what it is, bro? That has a lot to do with that click. It's coming back to me now. Okay. okay when when okay. I turned when I turned 30, I was like, "Damn, I'm not that young." And right. for what I want to do, I hope I have enough time. Yeah. Cuz in your 20s, you think there I'm going to live forever. I, like yeah. real talk, I felt like I was going to live forever. Yeah, for 30 years, <laughs> you know? Right? 30? And I was like, "What do I have to show for?" Mm. So when I turned 30, it was like, "Oh, like I hit the gas pedal a little bit harder. You know what I'm saying? And so that that moment of my values are different. My I, I treat time differently. Um, I treat people differently, and then I allow different people into my space. In my 20s, I was quantity over quality, including women, if I'm being completely honest. In your 30s, I'm like, your energy right now is killing the vibe. <laughs> And I'm not really for it. And I'm checking you too. And I'm gonna check you on yeah, it. Be me, yeah. Because right now it's quality over quantity. Yeah. And that took that long for me personally to to experience that. Yeah. That's you gotta let that marinate, dog. Yeah, I gotta let that simmer. <laughs> let, it, let it simmer a little bit. Some, that's some mojo with uh, yeah. you know, basil and yeah. onions. It's yeah. just garlic and <laughs> olive oil is just it's like simmering, right? You got it on like medium high right yes checking on it wow oh, that smells good <laughs> wow that was yeah that's a yeah bro and that, that's why yeah, i like the time yeah the, i i had it the, the other day too i had like i was like man, i'm 37 like mm -hmm. in 20 years i'm gonna be 57 in 10 years i'm gonna be 47 yeah like you do think about it in perspective. Yeah, and it's your priorities. Like you said, your yeah. values. It goes back to your values. Yeah. And, and constantly updating your value right. system. Right, um, Reassessing. Yeah, well, last year my whole, so I, I do a, um, a annual uh, goal setting party. 
Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's been on and off, but it's been pretty consistent okay. since around 2012, 2013. Okay. Every year I decide, like, what's it going to be on? One year was about, what's your wildest, most important goal? The other year was, um, you know, um, we're only going to speak on finances. But last year was, like, value system. The upgrading and the, the you know, renewal yeah. of, of your value system is, right. is super important, which, you know, yeah. After this talk, I'm probably going to go <laughs> and, and update them. And well, well let me, let, so let me ask you this. Um, you said you had a group of people mm -hmm. that you have this with. Um, how many men, roughly, would you say are in that group? Ten men and like six women. And of the ten men, were any under 30? Maybe one, maybe, and he's probably thirty. Maybe. <laughs> he was maybe like twenty nine. Maybe one. Yeah, all the ones that I that I hit up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when you're in your twenties, you're not thinking. Like, I ain't going no ghost hitting party. I ain't doing. That. You're not thinking that about stuff, man. Evolving. Yeah, yeah. Because at least for me, I was thinking everyone needs to evolve around me. Mm -hmm. What? Bro, right. my ego was so right. sideways, upside down, intertwined. It was just wild. Like the the mindset. God bless the people in my oh, life. God in my bless 20s. for making it this far. <laughs> when you <laughs> think about that type of behavior, Real talk. right? I'm like, wow. Thanks, I'm still here. Real talk. And Thank and you. thankfully, the people I have in my life still today are still here, bro. Still rock with me. <laughs> but I, I want to talk Thank about. Because I agree with you. The value system in reassessing and readjusting and checking in with it is super important. The timing of when we start to figure it all out. I know we said the click at 30, but but here's where I'm going. When you text me saying, I'm really, I'm kind of struggling right now trying to balance all that I have in, in my life. It happens to everybody at any particular time. I don't care how old you are. But correct me if I'm wrong, how you handle it now would be different, way different from when you handled in your twenties. Way different. Let's talk about that. Way different. Well, it, it comes to the priorities, so um, it's it's just a lot easier to prioritize when you when you know yourself, mm. and wow. you know that that doesn't align with your deepest purpose. Mm. So always always using that as your 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 compass, yeah, your north star. Like um, for instance. In the business I have right now, um, you know, which we'll get into. Yeah, good, good time to get into it. Actually, let's um, get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. So um, I'm the founder and CEO of Atlexo. Atlexo is an invention that we've been working on for the last two, three plus years, but it's ready to go to market. Uh, literally putting the finishing touches on the landing page and website and so on and so forth. But our mission is to connect to our higher selves through fitness. So every single um, decision with that Lexo, the world's first luxury fitness kit is driven by our mission mm -hmm. is to connect to your higher self through fitness. Always choose what your higher self would do. Your higher self would choose the nicer thing, the better vacation, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the recipe they would choose, you know? So when you, when you think about your personal mission statement, right. your personal core values, yeah that that has to be your your north star yeah and uh you know they call it the why they call it uh i don't know the it whatever they call it you know all the above all the above <laughs> yeah you know how do you how do you use it and i think again as you get a little bit older a little bit wiser a little more confident in who yourself you always use it to to you know to guide you it's a trigger ball yeah trigger point ball massage recovery Ooh. ball Oh yeah, yeah! Jump right, I'm gonna rope. use that right now. Yeah, power resistance bands. <sighs> yeah. Uh, inside here's uh, sliders, another set oh, of bands. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. So like. Oh whoa whoa. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh. Yeah. All this. So in the in the in the energy of. Let me show this. Oh yeah. In the energy of balance and 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 travel and being on the go and and just living your highest purpose. Yeah. So it you know it's a it's a fitness kit to keep you there but it, it you know it's 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 about the discipline it's about it's about um you know it's about more you know it's it's like when we've been talking on this you know the balance right, you, right. It's, it's, there's no you know, it's one way to fitness and it, and mm -hmm. it's about the brand pillars um you know mastering your craft you know what's your number one goal 
what what do you want more than anything else in life well that's what you should be going after but in order to do that you have to you know stay on the journey long enough you know like i, I love when drake says uh, you got to stop for gas on the road to riches mm. so you want to master your craft but you want to have your mindfulness um that's another pillar of the brand movement obviously we have a lot of different options there's no one true way <laughs> to health and then nutrition sleep eating well so on and so forth so this has been uh this has been in the motion i was gonna say yeah and, this and, is this yeah. has been in motion for for quite some time and you've seen yeah. some of the earlier prototypes but but yeah. bringing it bringing it here and maybe when we're talking about 20s and 30s mm -hmm. maybe in my 20s i would have attempted a venture like this and right. quit and quit yeah and stop and why because i didn't have the perspective or the value of patience mm -hmm. and persistence the way you yeah. have you know now mm -hmm. yeah see because for me i would have quit like for who can relate Let, let's say this was 27 year old oh, jd yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and if i would have started it back then if i would have i probably would have quit when it got hard right because i would have thought i'll do it later right i got time right i started at 33 and i was like if not now when right and that different shift in mentality i promise you is only because i'm over 30 because i'm like time is different now i don't have that we do we have a lot of time but we don't kind of thing you know what i mean and that whole perspective and also too uh here's a big part of it because i dealt with this even when right before i launched um imposter syndrome oh uh, yeah and what if i fail right right well what, what if what if someone doesn't like it right a lot of people probably don't like this. Right, a right. lot of people may not rock with this. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. And that's okay. This ain't for you. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's okay. And that's fine. And that's like something that's a, that a buffer that you get when yeah. you get in your 30s too. You, you care less. You care because you can care less about what people think. And it's it's back to what you said, dog. It's it's when you know who you are and you have that north star in your clear hindsight at all times, you pick your battles. Yeah. Differently. It's, it's a much easier to make decision. You said something that I think is very important and, and, and relevant to the context this year. When you know who you are, mm -hmm. as a man, I would say I didn't truly know, and here's the other caveat. Right. Here's the other caveat. Feel comfortable with, right? Because as Drake says, um, you know it's real when you are who you think you are. Mm. Mm. Yes. So it's knowing who you are and then having the confidence to know who you are. Exactly. And then and actually, and, and, and like, yeah. like we said way in the beginning of the episode, when you met me, you were like, oh no, JD is, is who he, 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 who he shows, you know, he on, on IG, yeah. I'm the same in person. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is called authenticity. It's called right. character. It's called integrity. I'm flawed. Like everybody else. I got a sure. lot of stuff to work on like everybody else, but to the core now I am who I think I am. Yeah, yeah. 20 something year old, man, I would sell you this beautiful version of me. For sure. Odds are it was not that. Right. Okay. Right, right. And here's the thing if right. you if you call me out on it, I'd cut you off. Right, right. Okay. Because right. you're replaceable. Right. Back to all that. So you're also replaceable, but you're also like, oh man, she's figuring me out. She's figuring yeah. out I'm full of shit. Right. She's figuring out, exactly. oh, oh my God, I don't have any more tricks and tactics. The reason why I also think men under 30 should not be in a serious relationship is because if they are, odds are, you are going to grow apart from your partner. Because as a man under 30, you probably don't know who you are. And even if you do, there's so much more room to grow. I have room to grow now. You have room to grow now, let alone 24, 27 years old. Come on. The, sea, the sky is the limit at that age. But now I'm trying to grow together with a partner. You know how hard that is in life, let alone under 30? What? Right. We're trying to say, basically, yeah. don't put the cart before the horse. Yeah. You got to take yeah. care of yourself, know who you are, be comfortable in that, and then you can give that and blend that with another woman and, and, and men, trial and error. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. men take longer than women in that department. Right. And it usually doesn't happen until that 30 click, whatever you want to call it, happens. So John Mayer has a beautiful quote in this, this song. Why did I have to practice on your heart? Why did I have to practice on your heart? 
Why? Why your heart? Right. And the reason the practice that word that he used, this is what I'm assuming he meant because I wasn't ready. That's definitely what he meant. I thought I was ready. I sold you the I'm ready package. No, no, I got it. I got it. But then I realized I wasn't. And then I had to learn that by practicing on your heart. And that's a trial and error 20s. And unfortunately, people get hurt along that trial and error. And people have scars along that trial and error. And wounds. And things that maybe wounds that won't be healed. A lot of women still, a lot of men too. Remember, we we just don't admit often that we're hurt. But it's a lot of wounds and scars that you were talking about earlier with some friends that now you realize like, damn, I I still have to repair those things. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep repeating the same me. I've had some take, I mean, a decade to heal. Exactly. Honestly. So. If, with with a lot of work, emotional work exactly. on top of just And that's healing. because you want to put the work in. Right. A lot of guys don't. Because right. it is it's a lot. Who you are today, because you've grown, is not who you were at twenty some years old. Yeah. Was uh, Muhammad Ali say mm-hmm. any person who looks at the at life at the at the age of seventy the way he did at twenties wasted the last a fool. fifty years of their life. Exactly. You know. So I think maybe we can um to give women some type of clarity as far as what to do now if you're in your 20s and trying to date and men i think date for sure get your feet wet get all the experience you can under your belt not sleep around but you know what i mean hopefully you know what i mean yeah but i don't think you should be dating with the intention of settling down with a life partner because as i said and esther perel says you either want a love story or a life story. In my 20s, I wanted a love story. I wanted to showcase this love story on Instagram and on all these platforms and to people. It really is. So, so what would you say is, is something that you would give women in their 20s and men in their 20s who are sitting there like, yeah, but my, but, but my man is the unicorn. Right, right. He's different. Okay, well, what, what would you give them? All right, I'm going to use a sports analogy. Last week, we watched the Super Bowl. Yeah. And we watched Tom Brady put on like a, a Super Bowl quarter, quarterback masterclass <laughs> right. against uh, another GOAT, right? right? Patrick Mahomes is the GOAT. But you saw the experience. You know, you saw the the confidence. You saw the strategy. You saw the the wholeness. And across the board, you know, Mahomes has all of the gifts probably – better than great Brady yeah but you know when it when it came down to them you know head to head right and I I just think about that with you know dating in their 30s and in their 20s just the the man when when it gets to that serious point yeah more more than likely more than likely in 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 your 30s and you'll and you'll know you know that you'll you'll know you're like man this guy has it right he gets it he wants it he lives it he breathes it yeah. It's it's not a you know it's not a facade it's not right. a you know there's no debate there's no denying mm-hmm. uh, somebody else uh, another friend said a, something very profound he was talking about like a business deal mm. and he's like if you have to go to the business deal and you're still trying to sell them <laughs> like right. it's not it's not it's probably not the deal you want it's not your client yeah it's yeah. almost a formality right so I I would think mm. you know if if someone is still having those doubts or having that that it's unclear. Yeah, it's it's a clear sign that that's probably that's probably not it because you know yeah. you know and that's yeah the the guys in the thirties you know we <laughs> we know, we just know <laughs> exactly yeah. my uh my one of my brothers hit me with this I said it a couple times on the show um I was going through something with a girl in my twenties and I was like I don't know bro if this is it and gave him a whole context yeah, dialogue yeah, yeah. and he yeah. said um. Can I just give you something really <laughs> simple? I was like, yeah, go ahead. He's older. For I said, sure. yeah, yeah. He said, um, if you don't know by now, mm-hmm. you know. Right. right. You know. And like like older, like OGs when they give you game, it'd be so simple. Bro, he <laughs> used a couple words. <laughs> it'd be so simple. It'd be so I, I simple. I probably talked for an hour. Yeah. And he like, gave me a couple words and I was like, like oh, sh-. I yeah, was yeah. like, uh. Yeah. Yep. And like I said last week too, a lot of men in their 20s who feel like this is no longer the wife that I thought I was going to have. And for whatever reason, 
it's really hard for us to have that uncomfortable conversation with the woman because it's got to be vulnerable. You know you're going to hurt their feelings. If you're a good guy, you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. No. But here's the thing. If you're going to make her cry, because you would if you were to end it, don't you think it's worse to make her cry later? Right. Marriage, kids, now you're divorced, broken home, than it is to cry now? Worst case, you got to pack up your stuff and move out. But life will go on. Yeah. And it's much easier, I feel, to have that conversation. Um, again, older, younger, you don't have that conversation. You avoid no. that conversation. Hell you yeah. ghost the conversation. You excuse the conversation. Yeah. Or you, or you cheat, and you have temptations to distract you from what is apparent and obvious, and something that you continue to push down. And um, that's another good bar, though. In your thirties, you have the perspective that when you know you want to change something, yeah. It's okay to take the time to figure it out. Right. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Sure. Like you said, you just said, oh, three, four years. I, but you thought about it. You pondered on yeah. it. Even with at Lexo. Yeah. I thought about it for a long time. Right. You know, even some of the ventures that I'm doing and yeah. now they're they're coming to fruition. But I thought right. about them for a long time with intention. And, yeah. And now they're happening. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure you also did your research on your competitors. You did your mm-hmm. research oh, on people sure. also moving in that space. And the same thing for, for sure. me. And I would encourage everybody to do this. When you start, because technically you are comparing in a way, in a form to that other person. But yeah. watch for me, it was watching Jay Shetty's very first ever mm, podcast. I'm going to watch that. Very first we'll ever one. We'll put that one. in the show notes. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, like Tim Ferriss does. Yeah, it, those will be yeah, the show yeah notes. exactly. Do you do show notes? I do do show notes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I, it takes me wow. a while. Wow. We yeah. are cooking oh, in for the sure. sauce. We do time, show time notes. Time stamps because people yeah. are impatient. They're nice. like, when do they talk about? Just just click the 27, 12 second mark. Perfect, perfect. Um, I, want, I want captions on my shit, too. Oh, for sure. I, for I sure. want like little like commercials, like little blips. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, give, yeah. Give them to me, too. I'm posting them. I, like, got I need all that. I, I need got like, you. I Social need a, clips. I'm about to turn this whole thing I into like it. a whole movement. Like, <laughs> for, yeah, appreciate you, like, Doc. Yeah, I, and it was like that was stuff like that made me realize like I could do this. Mm-hmm. Seeing his first video and his first episode and other people too that I was like they were in like the garage it's of crazy. their spot and let alone I'm blessed to have this kind of space Amazing. and yeah and um and you know what it was ultimately which kept me c- to continue to do it um because like I said in my 20s I probably would have quit as, as you referred to as well sure. um it is the way it's being received with the world for sure good and great because great the messages that I get and the comments that I see and then I and the conversations I have with people is I don't know how it would ever get old. I yeah. really don't, bro. When someone yeah. tells you you're helping um, shift my perspective in life, um, you're helping change my life, you're, you saved me from whatever um, road that I shouldn't have went down. Um, one woman recently DM'd me and said, um, I watched one of your episodes or content and you shifted my mind for interracial dating. Mm. I used to, she's a black woman and she said I was only for black love. I used to right. side eye and give dirty looks to black men dating outside their race. Right. But after I watched whatever the content was that you put out there, it made me realize a couple of different things. And I appreciate it. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. So that's what keeps me going. Um, I just want to help people um, because you're right. It's, it's certain conversations at certain times with certain people. For me, I'm like, other people will be able to relate to this. That's why the show is called Who Can Relate? But then also, Who can relate? yeah. And then also, I'm like, you're not alone. In feeling what you do, I promise you're not alone. Watch, you know, watch all these people be like, me too. And I was going through that as well. And oh, I, and, and they can be able to help you out because again, they can relate. It's all about relatability. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot in the, in the pipeline for the show, uh, for I the brand. It. And um, yeah. So yeah. what we do now, Okay. Is we end every show um, with two things. One right now is the round of rapid fire. Oh God! Questions. All right. Yeah, I've been freestyling lately, so I'm ready. Yeah, I was gonna say because you have no clue what's coming. Let's okay. Go improv. First question. Thank is, you for all those improv classes I took. Exactly. Yeah. First question is. Yeah. What is one life experience that you've had in your life that you would consider life changing? One experience in my life that I would experience. The first thing that comes to mind is, is you know, becoming a father. Yeah. That's life-changing. Right. Um, 
even like before they get there yeah right right you know, the news of yeah it, you're like oh that's a, that's a, an immediate <laughs> change and shift everything changes right. okay yeah question number two is what is your number one goal for 2021 uh, my number one most important goal for this year is to, um, you know, to launch my business, to successfully yeah. launch launch my business. Yeah. Um, that That's my number one passion. Okay. And, you know, we're, we're just right here. It's a couple last cogs and kinks. Oh, and yeah. It's close. You know, it's ready to go. It's yeah. that, 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 you know, this my, this my other baby. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's been in the womb. That's, that's about that's, to come out. Who can relate? I you can, know what I mean? I can so, understand. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that's my number one goal. That's that's okay. like the biggest purpose and intention Yeah. Um, ab- above all else um, okay. right now. All right. Question number three. What do you want to be known for when you leave this earth? Um, so think legacy. Yeah. So thinking legacy, um, I want to be known for being a good friend. Uh, I think friendships and relationships are important. I read this poetry book and it said something along the lines of sometimes like when you, when you like friendship breakups can be harder than relationship Mm, breakups. Right. And that one floored me. Yeah. And, I realized how hard I've taken friendship breakups right? and how like sometimes there's not always the outlet. Like when you break mm. up with your partner, it's like, oh man, let's go on a trip. Okay. It's okay. Let's right. get a drink. I'll come over. I'll do that. But right, when like right. you break up with your friend, yeah. it's like, oh, you'll be bad. You'll be all right without them. But you don't realize mm-hmm. how, how, how much, um, yeah. that, you know, affects, that you. affects you. So mm-hmm. I, I hope that, when you know my legacy will just be that i was just a, a really good friend you, mm-hmm. could, you you know you could count on me as a, right. as a good friend you could count on me to return your call yeah you can count on me to help you if i can you can count on me to mm-hmm. to, to give you encouragement have yeah. talks you could count on me to you know reach out yeah um so yeah that's dope mm-hmm. um question number four yeah what do you want women to know about men if you could just pick one thing you know, we're, 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 we're conquerors. We're achievers. We're, you know, triumphant. We're, we're conquest. Mm. So conquests are different. Like in the, in the old days, mm. the conquest was to murder, murder, kill empire, acquire mm-hmm. thing. And it's not like that per se anymore, but you know we're we're about our triumphs we're we're about our you know deepest goals and purposes and and it's just like um you know you like watch gladiator or hmm. braveheart yeah. or something like that that's 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 what men are about like you know give you a smooch and you know but yeah i got to go i got i got to go even alchemist you remember mm-hmm. he left fatima at the the oasis yeah so you had to go find this treasure right so just you know just just love and appreciate that Mm -hmm. i think that's the if a woman could know that Mm -hmm. understand that and embrace that and just envelop that yeah um because we're also we're gonna do we're gonna do that for you you know we're we're gonna do that for you we're gonna support you because we know we know first off hand we know what what that what that feeling is about so that's 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 really powerful i love that answer because it's it's women hopefully can learn to hold that space for us because you can have success without fulfillment and what men try to always seek Mm. is success but as you get older fulfillment becomes more important than success hopefully it does if you're greedy out there this doesn't apply to you right (laughs) but no the fulfillment you know and then yeah the fulfillment you know seeing yeah and then a man moving with and in purpose and an intention unstoppable so if women can understand that it is it is part of our dna that we will crave to accomplish that yeah and i promise you once we do everyone around us will be better for it especially the woman and and i remember we were talking about like um you know 
uh, during this interview, I'm in this phase or I'm in this state yeah, of mind. Yeah, and I yeah. know you had spoke on it last week, but mm. I'm, I'm definitely in that way of the superior man mm. right now. Yeah. And, you know, shout out to all my friends who recommended it to me. And then right. I read it at the right time. Timing was everything. For sure. And then, like, af- after reading it, it just reinforced a lot of, of, of purpose. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, you know, I'm just loving it. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. The way of the superior man, I will put that in the show notes because uh, for, for men out there, um, that is a must. It is an essential. It's a must. It's a must. Um, it's a must. Piece to your arsenal. You I have to have it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Last question for you. Sure. What do you admire most about you? Oh, man. Hmm. That's actually a really good question. Um, I, w- I, w- I would like to admire. I, I admire the most that, I'm, that I have the ability to, to be, be nice to myself. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then always mm. just keep that in mind. Like, I can be nice to myself. Yeah. I can, I can treat myself good. I deserve yeah. this massage. I deserve right. to go here. Mm. I deserve the new pair of shoes. You know, I deserve to read this book. I deserve mm. to take this time. Yeah. You know, I, de- I deserve it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that would be it. That's dope. And the reason why I ask is um, part of this show, my elevator pitch is very simple. Um, it's a show about people discovering their higher selves through adversity because we all go through it vulnerability we need to go through it more especially men and then self-love yeah and that's why i asked that question because it's it throws a lot of people off it does it because me off. basically i'm asking you to toot your own horn and that's <sighs> yeah, and here's the thing is off. like self-love isn't selfish it's important as yeah. you said to be nice and kind to yourself you are what what you think you become yeah. So be careful with what you're feeding your thoughts, yeah. especially about yourself, because oh, yeah. you will end up becoming that. It's true. Um, so that is that is so important. I and I have to that. ask per the title of the episode, yeah. would you have had that answer in your 20s? No. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is the last part of the show. Last part, last part, last part. Yeah, yeah. This is my time to acknowledge my guest. Okay. Sit back, relax. All right. Um, <sighs> <laughs> Oh, exactly. My work here is done. So, um, oh, lay it on real thin. Yeah. I need this right now. Exactly. Nice S- speaking of self love, <laughs> um, I want to acknowledge you, man, for um, for being who you are, and and I will dive into that. I've met a lot of people in my life, um, blessed to be able to say that, and a lot of it has been through modeling. I have. I think I can say it's less than 10. It's probably closer to six guys that I have met in my 16 years that I would consider a friend. I would consider a brother. Um, And you're one of them. Thank you. Because you have shown me and you've shown your following and you have shown your daughters, even though they might not be able to comprehend it yet, but they will. um, What it is to be a kind person what it is to be a kind human being, what it is to be a man who is confident within himself, but also knows he knows nothing at all. Yeah. And that's okay. And he's willing to put the work in consistently and he's willing to be vulnerable, show his truth, say his truth, be transparent, but then be strong still, you know, to still have a presence, uh, boundaries. Um, that is very rare from what I've seen nowadays. So the fact that you embody all of that is a beautiful thing. Thank you. Um, I think people who are in your presence, as Kanye said, it's, it's my presence is a present, but with people like you, it actually is because every time we are, you know, in each other's presence, but also just on the phone or even texting, you know, I'm just, I leave better for it. Likewise. And and it's funny you you said uh, you want to be known for being a good friend. Um, whenever you call me or text me or Facetime me, as soon as I see your name, I'm like, damn, I haven't I haven't tied. I, I I should have called him. I should be the one checking <laughs> no, up. You know, but it's it's the um, it shows how much you care. And so that's perfect with, that you gave that answer because I already had this in my head that I was going to yeah, say. So I care. Um, I care. I just appreciate 
that you appreciate life. Thank you. You know, and that that's, that says a lot. That's, that's um, really powerful for people who can actually um, live that way. So um, the world is better because you're in it. The world thank will you. be better when your brand is launched. Oh, thank you. It and, will be. Uh, it really will be. Yeah. I feel it. And, thank you. And we thank need you. not only more like you, but we definitely need more men like you. Thank men you. need more men like you and women need thank more you. more men like you too. So you're giving us all hope. Uh, yeah, that could be another future segment of just really getting in the nitty gritty on the yeah. fitness, the fitness. Oh, packs, for sure. The Because there's a lot that comes with yeah, man. us being able to sit here to talk Cancer, about this. diabetes, um, you know, hypertension. Right especially um the black community exactly um, yes 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 know, long-term health stress you know right it, it's that's that's what's really layered yeah the subtext of of of, of this 100 we'll get to that but you gotta yeah. you know tantalize yeah them with yeah the, yeah the i'm not going stuff. anywhere you're not yeah. going anywhere thank you man thanks and, for those words and uh, of course dog of course it, i appreciate man. you coming on yeah, yeah. it's been an honor it's been a pleasure yeah. Um, I know you, my buddy. He says something uh, about brotherhood. There's like some phrase in some language. Yeah, anda, yeah. anda, anda. Uh, I mean, like brotherhood. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We in there. Appreciate you, you, bro. I appreciate of course. you too. Thank you. I, I am very selective with who I ask to come on, um, and that's important for everyone to know because I am protective of my community, should as be. anyone should be. should be. And if I feel like you may not be able to bring value to them, I won't even. I'll talk to you on the phone, but I won't spend all this time yeah, to yeah. create wow, this. Thank you. Yeah, this so, is quite the setup. Yeah, guys. bro. It's uh, yeah. again, it was Hopefully an honor. You get on this hot seat, this is, this is beautiful. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate you, bro. So it's yeah. an honor, a pleasure, yeah. and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again. Hopefully, uh, on your side of the of the. Yeah, yeah, definitely. On uh, the right this side, this will not be the last. This is to be continued. Absolutely. Is, yeah. So um, no, it's calmer, it's smoother. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously we have the great setup. Yeah. I mean, I'm literally looking at the beautiful California sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> some palm trees. Yeah. The ambiance. The ambiance yeah, here is it's just everything. Calm and relaxing. Yeah. Man. Just, yeah. just talk about life, man. It's and, a good vibe. And, and it's smooth, bro. Yes, sir. So until smooth. next time. Till next time. Thank you, bro. I'm gonna stay. Yes, Thank sir. you. Cause what, we've been going what 50 minutes 40 yeah th yeah 50 maybe i thought it was like 152 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah obviously this will be yeah, yeah there's come some the edits, first but two three minutes was edited out but we're, oh, we're rolling well this is great. this is smooth yeah it's um, smooth it's like uh, it's effortless like coffee yeah it's that's what i'm effortless. saying it's, it's a conversation there's yeah, just happened to be we're tandem. cameras which Bro, when, check. You, when you start getting um you know joe rogan viewership numbers and, and then you start you start <laughs> thank you when you start getting those joe rogan viewership numbers and you start uh you know interviewing celebrities and, and ceos and stuff you know i still i still better have my my spot on the, on the, on the podcast you know what i'm saying no I, I it's real talk man i see i see this um i see you well well two things yeah i see you doing this podcast for as long as it's serving you yeah because i think there's an impermanence to everything in life mm -hmm. and as long as you're passionate about it and yeah. you bring in your 120 percent and you're still growing and evolving yeah. like you know let it serve you yeah um, right but the the consistency that you're putting out episodes and the way that you're growing with the the aesthetic and the the subject and the content matter it's only gonna you know grow and evolve and and you know i definitely see big things for for the show i'm actually super honored you know to, oh, to, to be on here appreciate um, that man thank you yeah definitely and I, yeah. I i don't know i just like i'm just gonna throw ideas out of here like i see us doing this 
you know, once the pandemic has died down. Live? Like us. Yeah, we could do it live. Yeah. We could do it like somewhere <laughs> exotic. Yeah, yeah. You know oh, what for I mean? sure, bro. Like, because yeah. the perspective might change, the, right, the right. conversation yeah. might change. Yeah. You know, maybe do it before a live audience. What, what's, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I, I first of all, I appreciate all that real talk. That means a lot, especially coming from you. Um, and the other thing I'll say is like, you know, my family right now is like, <clears throat> well, are you making money? Ugh. I'm like, no, it actually cost me to do this. You don't, know what I'm saying? Don't ask that <laughs> but like any business you start, as you will find out, it takes time to make to make money. I mean, I know you know that now. But for me, it's this is like the early on stages of, of the brand as I kind of look at it in, in the bigger picture. I plan on going on tour oh yeah <laughs> essentially oh yeah you and will. having guests on oh, a couch will. or two chairs in front in front of a live audience oh you will i i'm i have aspirations of this turning into a talk show oh nice um i could easily see that your boy is trying to be let me put this out there in the universe yeah, you put, put out, out et there. here's my pitch out to the universe i want to be the younger dr phil mm. better looking steve harvey nice <laughs> steve harvey with a six-pack yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. without the mustache and all that yeah, um yeah. and without without the zoot suits shout out to Lori harvey I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah 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 but anyways um okay so back to the lecture at hand yeah parenthood is change that's a change that is a change that's life-changing yeah and you know it's like we can do this another combo um I realized, you know, one of my pain points was like, I'm, I'm always, I'm always good at things. Like if I want to be like good at fitness, I like learn everything about it, trial and error. If I want to be good at reading, I read every book or if mm-hmm. I want to be good at modeling, I'm shooting and you know, fashion. I want to be good at acting. I read every book, every script, tried every technique. But then I was like, like, oh damn, I'm actually not that good. I'm I like I'm a, I'm a good father, but I, yeah. I don't know anything about. It. I'm not good at this yet. I'm not good. Right. Yeah, I'm, and then I'm only like two years in. So I was, I'm yeah, like, you just getting yeah, started. I'm <laughs> like, you know, these people been doing this for a long time. I'm not, yeah. I'm not like good at it. Like I want to get I want to get good at it. Um, and that you know is part of the the, the life changing. Like mm-hmm. I have to you know fundamentally change and shift things to get get better at it. But yeah. Well, the the two things, if I can give you, yeah, any, give me some, any, yeah. yeah, any advice for fatherhood. Um, one of them is specifically pertaining because you have daughters so yeah. you're a girl dad so with that is um i'll give you what someone gave me okay are you going to be the man you want your daughters to marry one day mm. will you be the representation of that that's the first piece of advice the second thing is always be willing to adapt yeah because they're gonna tell you what they need right we think we know you know what I'm saying? My right. daughter's dog. My daughter's 13. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm just like trying to get in where I fit in, kind of right. thing. I'm she not has trying her to own life. overstep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to force anything. I'm just like, just however you need me to help serve you in any right. kind of way. Okay. Just let me know, Got kind you. of thing. I'm just know I'm always here. Whatever. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. Learn how to adapt. All right. So, yep. um,.